Okay, so it's been almost a year since the first episode of The Wonderful Lady B came out. Season three premieres on the 13th, a full year since season one came out. And because so many of you have asked and so many of you have so much love for these characters, I thought I would give you guys a little quick update about what happens to the DeVeres after all this. If you want all the details about what happens, you can go and subscribe to my Patreon. I'm gonna try to do this all in one video, but there might have to be a part two. Let's go. Mercy DeVere um, uses all of her incredible wealth and privilege to run a smear campaign on Bradford Bryan and pin all the murders on him. Mercy really utilizes the power of journalism and the newspapers to paint this like horrific account of what happened that night. And all of her children back her up, otherwise they will be disowned. Wealthy oil tycoon murders both brothers in a fit of rage. Two other bodies never recovered. You know, search for philanthropist wife of Boston lawyer. Like, corpses never found, probably lost at sea. Mysterious visitor from the Orient, like, loses life at hands of psychopathic millionaire. Like, that kind of shit. Mercy does a good job at this because Bradford's convicted of murdering four people and he dies in prison. Justine divorces Bradford while he's in prison. She finds out she's pregnant. She has a son named Colin Bryan who becomes the sole heir to the Bryan oil fortune. Jane arguably becomes a better person uh, throughout all this. She writes a book about her experience. Justine also writes a book. Uh, she marries a timber baron and he dies on the Titanic less than a year after they've been married. She inherits his fortune. Um, she adopts two kids and she lives pretty happily in New York collecting art. Everett DeVere never discusses his second wife again, although he does build a very ornate mausoleum to her because his mother told him to, because it would be good optics. Everett never truly um, reconciles with his children. He moves to Palm Beach and uh, has a heart attack on the golf course. Opal DeVere graduates from Radcliffe in 1915. She moves into the Rhode Island mansion and she entertains war veterans there. Uh, she's an accomplished world-renowned pianist. She meets her husband at one of these parties. Uh, they have two children. They continue to live in the Rhode Island mansion for the rest of her life. The year World War I breaks out, Madeline DeVere is supposed to compete in the Olympics, uh, representing the United States in women's archery. But she becomes a Red Cross nurse instead. She has one son out of wedlock, who is rumored to be the child of Rudolph Valentino. She becomes a gay icon and anti-war activist. She moves into Everett's house when he moves to Florida, and she lives there for the rest of her life with her female companion. Duncan DeVere does not fight in World War I. He is just too young to be drafted, but he does graduate from Harvard. He becomes a very popular author in New York. He marries an actress, they have two sons, and his best-selling series is a collection of children's books entitled Les Filles Nadine. It's about a little fairy who goes and has adventures all around the world, and it's based on Barbara. Oh, in this world, Bradford Bryan is still considered one of the most notorious serial killers, so he probably has groupies, which grosses me out. That's it. 